Are you thinking of doing a master's or PhD project and wonder if you're up to doing it? Well, I'm going to give you four questions that will help you along. Let's do it. Hi everybody, welcome to my video. My name is Dr. Jan Kutsia and my mission is to make you think differently about learning so that you can go out to the world and be an inspiration to it. Maybe you're considering doing graduate studies and part of that entails doing a research project. Well, I'm going to help you along. This might seem like a daunting task and for sure it is. I want to help you get going to wrap your mind around what it actually means to do research. Hopefully this video will put you at ease and take some pressure off you. Specifically, I'm going to give you four questions that you need to answer before you start your studies. This could be either a PhD or a master's thesis. doesn't matter. The principles are pretty much the same. Be sure to stay right to the end because I'm going to give you a wonderful tip that all my master's and PhD students have used that have helped them to complete their studies. Research is not easy. It's a daunting task and it's normal to feel overwhelmed by it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convey the lessons that I've learned through all these years, what my students have experienced, even what I've experienced, to help you feel more at ease as you take on this project. But as a supervisor, before I start, I normally arrange a meeting with the candidate. And I do this for two reasons. First, I want to get a feel for the topic and the feasibility thereof. Especially at PhD level, doing research means developing something new. So it's important for me to assess right at the get-go whether or not the topic itself is worth investigation. I also want to see whether or not the student has actually done some reading and that's crucial right at the beginning. You have to read to see what the existing literature and the thinking and the debates are all about. So if the student doesn't show me that the proposed project has value and is worth pursuing and that he or she has read enough on the topic, what I will normally do is I will ask them to go and read more and come back in three or four months time. The second reason why I ask for a meeting is because I want to see whether or not I get along with the student. That's an important factor. We're going to be working together for in a PhD maybe up to five, six, maybe seven years. So it's not only important that I assess whether or not I can work with a student, but the student needs to see whether my professional qualifications, my research background, my topic of specialization actually fits his project. It is after all going to be a relationship between myself and the student. So it's crucial that these relational dynamics are established quite early on in the process. So what are these four questions? My experience has taught me that if you answer yes to these four questions, you are ready to start working on the research project. But I want you to be honest with yourself because writing a PhD thesis in particular is tough. It's going to take a lot of time and it will require you to have persistence. So make sure that you ask yourself these questions and answer them honestly. Let's get into the first question. Quite simply, are you a curious person? Put differently, do you like asking questions? And perhaps more importantly, do you like finding the answers to those questions? When doing research, there are essentially two parts. You need to be able to ask the right questions and you need to be able to find the answers to those questions. And that is crucial, asking the right question. That is not easy. And especially in academic research, questions can't be trivial. They must carry weight. They must make a contribution. They must be something worth pursuing. And this only comes from reading the literature. You need to immerse yourself in that. In other words, in order to ask the right questions, you need to know what scholars in the past have asked and what the answers to those questions were. Because you don't want to repeat what they've done, you want to do something new and novel. The second question is, are you actually interested in the topic that you are proposing? Now this might sound like a silly question, I mean, why wouldn't you be interested in it? But remember, I'm assuming that you probably haven't started on your proposal, you haven't started on the project itself. So it's important that you determine right up front your actual interest in the topic. You don't want to be in a situation where maybe your colleagues or your peers or your professor has pushed you in a direction early on in the process only to come down five years down the line and realize but you've got no interest in it. Remember, they are not going to write your thesis. You are going to write your thesis. 
they are not going to be working on it late at night or over weekends. So it's important that you select a topic that interests you and that you're fascinated by. This is, after all, what will carry you over the line in the long run. The third question is, are you prepared to make some quite serious personal sacrifices for at least the next three years? Writing a thesis will take a lot of time, so you need to be realistic about this. There will be sacrifices with regards to the time that you have at your disposal. You will probably have to decline many offers to social events or family gatherings because over weekends in particular, you're going to have to be sitting behind the computer and writing your thesis. So you can think for yourself, this will put pressure on your kids and your family because you're taking away one of the most important things in any relationship, time. And that time is what you need to work on your research project. I don't want to discourage you. My message here is not one of discouragement. Don't become despondent. Doing research is one of the most rewarding things that you can ever do. The sacrifices will absolutely be worth it. So in a moment, I'm going to give you a great tip that many years of supervising students that I still implement to this day, that I guarantee you that you will finish your thesis and that the thesis will become part of your life and not the other way around. So what is the fourth question? And I'm going to change text slightly because this question focuses more on the topic itself. What is tickling you? Is there something that maybe you have been asking questions to for many years, either in your professional or your academic environment, that you just don't have an answer that you are satisfied with? Is something maybe suspicious or unresolved and you're just not happy with any answers that anybody gives you? If you answer yes to this, the topic of your study is probably embedded somewhere in those questions. The topic itself must also remain relevant for several years because you don't want to be in a situation four or five years down the line where you read an article or see somebody's PhD thesis and they've basically done what you've done. So a key year is that you've got to keep reading, not only in the beginning phases of your PhD or your master's, but right through, right till the end, you've got to keep reading. You've got to familiarize yourself with the changing thinking, the changing debates on the topic, so that you ensure that you evolve your PhD, you evolve your masters as the thinking evolves. And of course, if you are intrigued by the topic, it's no problem reading on it. And I like summing up the benefits of this interest in three words, read, read, read. Now that you've hopefully answered yes to all four of these questions, I'm gonna give you a tip that's gonna help you start and end strong. One of the biggest challenges that you're gonna face in all your research is consistency. There will be times where you are distracted away from your writing. There'll be times where you have to maybe work, maybe family commitments. You need to ensure that you consistently work on your thesis. And this takes planning because the consistency will not come just by itself. There might be times where you don't work on the project for months on end. This you must try and avoid at all costs. Because if you start up again, it can take you weeks maybe to get into the right mindset to write constructively. I often refer to these lulls in focus as the graveyard session because there's pretty much not anything happening. Your brain has to be in touch in some form or another with a project on a consistent basis. If this is not the case, you're going to waste unnecessary time starting up again. My suggestion is that you plan ahead. Put aside one day a week where you cordon yourself off for at least three hours and write during that time. Focus during that time. Till today, I do this. I cordon off on Monday morning. I don't read any emails. I put my phone off until at least one o'clock in the afternoon. No one hears from me. Please don't tell my boss. I really cannot stress the importance of this enough. The more you keep your brain involved on the PhD, the better it will be to finish it in the end and finish it strong. Even if you write just one paragraph on a Monday morning, that's one paragraph less that you have to write. And I guarantee you, over time, this accumulates. Before you know it, you've finished a chapter. There have been times where I wrote five, six pages in a morning session. But there have been other times where I write maybe two sentences. And that's one of the biggest problems of any research. It's that you don't consistently work on it. And the times that you might want to work on it, you don't consistently write on it. You don't write 
the same amount. You don't necessarily write the same quality. But if you cordon yourself off once a week for at least three hours, I can guarantee you in the long run, the snowball effect will work in your favor. The point is, consistency is what's going to get you over the finish line. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing. I will see you next time.